Hello everyone, welcome back to GG and this is part 3 for today. It's Monday, January 14th, 2013 on Darko. Alright, so I'm ready to continue here with Israel, then we'll move on to Iran, Pakistan, a little bit of India, China. It says Israel recruits army of bloggers to combat anti-Zionist websites. So Israelis who speak a second language to represent Israel on problematic websites in new absorption ministry programs. So um, it's just, it's pretty interesting. Uh, because in order to uh, be anti-Zionist or have an anti-Zionist blog, you have to have a pro-Israel, pro-Zionist um, um, agenda or news, which they do, which is, uh, you know, most mainstream news is actually pro-Zionist propaganda. So when you try to, to counter that, they call you anti-Zionist or anti-Semitic. Uh, really interesting, you know, because I was talking about co-opting uh, this sentiment, and that's exactly what Rand Paul is doing by uh, basically saying that he uh, in the U.S. should not tell Israel how to, to defend itself because they're always under attack. So I remember a video just a month ago seeing, I believe it was a guy from England, and he was talking about how these people are ruthless. I mean, they're not just uh, an army of bloggers. I mean, these people uh, carry out, um, uh, you know, death threats, and um, they'll threaten your family. Um, they'll try to blackmail you and your family, take you know personal pictures and all kinds of stuff, and post it. Um, they're ruthless. They're ruthless, and uh, they can make people's lives a living hell. Um, it says the Immigration Absorption Ministry announced on Sunday it was setting up an army of bloggers, which they already have, to be made up of Israelis who speak a second language to represent Israel in anti-Zionist blogs in English, French, uh, Spanish, and German. The program's uh, first volunteer came from Gaza, it said. Oh, five kilometers from Gaza. I heard about the project over the radio and decided to join because I'm living in the middle of the conflict. Within 30 minutes of announcing the program, which was approved by the foreign ministry on Sunday, five volunteers were already in touch. So it goes on here and it says that um, uh, personnel will be directed or will direct the volunteers to websites deemed problematic. So into Pakistan, there's been a lot going on in Pakistan, a string of uh, bombings and that, so over 100, over 100 people, well over 100 that were injured and killed. Um, you also had a little standoff with India and the drone strikes. And of course, the whole time in the backdrop, you have Iran trying to lay this gas pipeline to, uh, to Pakistan. And they will actually start to try to compete as well as for, uh, providing natural gas. Then you have uh, the root causes of religious extremism in Pakistan are traceable to the time when the U.S. government sought to oust Soviet forces from Afghanistan. He says here that on those days, or in those days, the ISI uh, was heavily mobilized by the U.S. and funded by Saudi Wahhabis to achieve this goal. No wonder the only countries that recognized the Taliban with the green light of Washington were Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, and the United Arab Emirates. He took the task that the ISI and other government-funded organizations for the incessant violence against Shias in Pakistan. So, finishing it up, it says the Shia genocide in Pakistan is the product of a twisted, ill-defined mentality systematically promoted by the U.S. and its puppet Arab regimes. Go in there and check it out. Links will be posted. You have Indian forces injure Pakistani citizen at line of control. It goes on here and it says that the shooting took place on Monday and uh, the Pakistani citizen was transferred to the nearby hospital for medical treatment. It says the incident comes after the general, a commander of the Indian Army, threatened that India would take retaliatory measures against Pakistan over the recent killing of two Indian troops near the disputed border. However, the Pakistani government said on January 6th that the Indian troops had crossed the de facto border, storming a military checkpoint, adding that uh, Pakistani soldiers, one of them, had been killed and another injured. And so who knows what the truth is there. Hundreds of thousands of ra uh, rally for South Yemen self-rule. This is from the AFP. Hundreds of thousands of Yemenis supported self-rule for the formerly independent South rallied in its former capital, Aden, on Sunday. It says here, our revolution is a, a revolution of every Southerner who says no to the Union. The United States is blaming Iran for the South Yemen secessionist protests. They insist that Iran plots to destabilize the Strait of Hormuz. So you'll see this in a lot of articles. You can blame, they basically blame Iran for the sun uh, coming up. It says massive protests calling for self-rule in the city of Aden and a litany of grievances against the Sana'a-based government have much of the South Yemen talking about re-establishment. 
over 22 years after being absorbed by the Sali re uh, regime. So it says none of these sounds very good to the Obama regime, of course, which loudly endorses the new Yemeni ruler uh, and the single candidate election that installed him, so naturally they're blaming Iran. The bizarre claim would make little sense from the Iranian perspective as they have uh, little to no interest in southern Yemen and the only natural allies in the region would be in the far northern portion of Yemen where the Shiite Shiites have their own secessionist ambitions, have a long-standing feud with Saudi Arabia across the border. South Yemen, for its part, appears to be of little strategic value, even if it was an Iranian ally, a huge su uh, supposition, and isn't on the strain of Hormuz at any rate. So, there you go. Moving on, we have Iran plans to phase out dollar and euro in a foreign trade, says economists. The Iranian government has made up its mind to phase out vehicle currencies such as the dollar and euro in its foreign trade, says uh, this uh, Hosseini, Iran's Minister of Economic Affairs. He had he added that after the imposition of sanctions on Iran by the U.S. and E.U., the Central Bank of Iran immediately moved to change the country's hard currency reserves into euros and gold, which was, quote, beneficial to the country. Then you have Vietnam amidst deploying shill bloggers to support the government. It says here the Vietnamese propaganda officials have admitted deploying people to engage in online discussions and post comments supporting the Communist Party's policies party has also confirmed that it operates a network of nearly 1,000 public opinion shapers. They're assigned with the task of spreading the party uh, the party line. So, pretty interesting. The tactic is similar to China's model of internet mod moderators who aim to control the news and manipulate their opinion, says political opportunists. They want to uh, hire hundreds of so-called internet polemists in the fight against online hostile forces. The bloggers also take part in online discussions where they fiercely attack anybody who they see as critical of the regime, kind of like Israel. Their, their little army of bloggers. They have Wall Street fills Malaysia streets with protesters again. On the 14th, U.S.-funded street front of Anwar Ibrahim and his political coalition called Burish once again took to Malaysia streets with himself leading the rally. So it says RT covered the rally in the article, Malaysians gather in tens of thousands demanding political reforms where it was reported up to be 80,000 protesters evented, or, yeah, attended the event. But it says here, while they maintain their causes, political reform has been exposed that the movements hold significant ties with foreign interests. So it says here that the Malaysian Insider reported back in June of 2011 that the leader, this uh, Screen Vincent, herself admitted to uh, Barish receiving money from two U.S. organizations, the National Democratic Institute, and Open Society Institute for other projects, which she stressed was unrelated to the march. A visit to the NDI website revealed indeed that funding and training had been provided by the U.S. organizations before uh, NDI took down the information and replaced it with a more benign uh, version purged entirely of any mention of uh, this uh, Bursi. Finishing up, this Bursi may have drawn in many well-intentioned Malaysians tru truly seeking reform, but the movement and the political interests it truly represents will undoubtedly destroy the hard-won progress Malaysia has made since achieving independence from Britain decades ago. The plans to send more patrol vessels near disputed islands say the Japanese media to deploy two more ships to the islands in the East China Sea for defensive purposes. And I can't right, switch gears here. We move to this... Uh, assassination or quote suicide driven to suicide a u.s court drops charges on aaron swartz uh, days after his suicide a federal court in massachusetts has dismissed the hacking case against aaron schwartz or swartz who committed suicide on january 11th while facing decades behind bars and a one million dollar fee he was of course the uh, reddit uh, co-founder so they accused him of theft uh, for a digital journal archive held by universities and other research institutions, which is mostly taxpayer-funded through subsidies, so, you know, the information should be available. But According to the Huffington Post, Swartz's defense team suspected federal attorneys were using Swartz as an example to show how serious they could be with online crime cases. So there's the date, 1-14-2013 of the dismissal. The U.S. justice system is rife with intimidation, dead activist families say. They say Aaron's death is not simply a personal tragedy, it is a product of criminal justice system rife with intimidation and prosecutorial overreach.
He openly criticized the U.S. and the Israeli regime for launching joint cyber attacks against Iran. He also uh, criticized Obama's kill list. He was also critical of the monopoly of information and believed that information should be available to everyone for the benefit of society. In your standard dicta uh, dictatorship, activists are brought out back and shot. So in the U.S., crypto dictatorship activists are bullied by the state until they go bankrupt, are buried under a mountain of legal woes, or are publicly discredited or humiliated, or as in the case of activists, Reddit co-founder and Swartz made to crack under the constant pressure and basically kill themselves. You can go in there and check out that article. Links will be posted. You have prominent rifle manufacturer killed in mysterious car crash days after posting a psych drug linked to school shooters. So, yeah. Most celebrated battle rifle manufacturers in America found dead. He was, uh, his car traveled across the oncoming lane onto the dirt highway shoulder until it struck two boulders. I covered this before, but barely a week before this incident, he posted a detailed uh, post on Facebook that listed all the school shootings tied to psychiatric drugs. At the end of the post, he asked what drugs was Adam or Peter Lanta on. Alleged four young adults, one the son of a police sergeant, lured two friends to a house robbed and strangled them and then played video games. So the question is, is who actually called this in? After attempting to dismember the bodies Thursday afternoon, the suspects continue to uh, in the party atmosphere. Police chief said not only the crime scene was the most brutal, heinous, and upsetting things he's ever seen in 27 years of law enforcement, but the disregard for common decency towards human beings. Speaking of which, common decency of human beings, these vaccinations. Um, I looked for the article, couldn't find it, but someone told me about how uh, the medical establishment actually created some kind of loophole or extra security measure, health security measure, about now allowing uh, infants under the uh, six months of age to receive uh, pandemic flu vaccinations. So, but they're already stuck with so many vaccinations before six months. Uh, but either way, flu outbreak appears to falter, but only time will tell. This is January 11th, just like a day or two after I covered all of this uh, hoopla and hyped up uh, crap, right? Because I made the correlation or the link between what? Uh, a low um, flu vaccine or low vaccination uh, profit. So as the profits for vaccinations went down, the hype of, of, of an actual flu pandemic went up. So now they're saying it appears to falter just days after, but it doesn't really matter because hospitals are cracking down on workers who are refusing their flu shots. In Rhode Island, one of the three states with tough penalties behind a mandatory vaccine policy for healthcare workers, a labor union is suing over it. Uh, some people have been fired for refusing, several resigned. It makes sense. Look at it from 114. Uh, USA children's flu vaccine rates are low. This year's flu season is in full swing, and it goes unfortunately, or actually it's fortunately, uh, that not enough children are getting the flu shot, even though health officials recommend, or the eugenics officials recommend that all children six months and older uh, get the vaccine. Okay, so there you go. So this doctor, you're supposed to trust them, many of those illnesses could have been prevented by vaccination, the best known protection against the flu. Well, actually, no, it's not. Just like I said, there's things that you can do without having to stick a needle in your body to uh, you know, help your health. It's called strengthening your immune system. If you're a doctor, you should know that, but they don't because they're not taught that. They're taught by basically pharma, pharmaceutical companies um, how to diagnose like a mechanic um, and what pills to issue. Veterans Hospital exposes hundreds to HIV and hepatitis not the first time from the 15th. New York Veterans Hospital may have exposed more than 700 of its patients with HIV, hepatitis B, or hepatitis C by mistakenly reusing, ooh, mistakenly reusing its insulin pens, which are used to inject diabetes patients with a hormone produced by the pancreas. So, good job, guys. In 2012, the U.S. military suicides hit a record high of 349 across four branches compared to 301 in 2011. Look at this. I saw this uh, thing from Rahm Emanuel. I'll go through this tomorrow. Limit criminal access to guns. I hate listening to him talk because he's a damn Zionist and he's representing the mega city or mega region of Chicago, Great Lakes. So Chicago's police chief, this went under the radar, never even heard of this, will shoot licensed civilians with guns. So great. I just haven't moved back to Chicago for a short period of time here. And this is, uh, this is uh, who's running the show here. I don't care if they're licensed legal firearms, people who are not highly trained, putting guns in their hands is a recipe for disaster. So I'll train our law enforcement pigs that there is concealed carry law, but when somebody turns with a firearm in their hand, the officer does not have an obligation to wait to get shot to return fire, and we're not going to have tragedies as a result of that, I'm telling you right up front. And these people don't like concealed carry um, uh, people. So, I mean, they don't like them. So this police chief is basically reiterating uh, what we already know, which is they shoot first, ask questions later. That's basically what he's saying.
CEO loses gun permit over saying that he would start killing people if gun control laws are passed. That's why they're privileges. Thank you.